and welcome back. Now let's take a look at what block replacement might mean and actually see an example of thinking about who might get kicked out when things get full. So block replacement policy. What do we know about caches? We have a knob. That knob can either go to, um, if it's an M total, if it's M total blocks in the cache, and it's M way, it's N way set associative when N is one, direct mapped. When N is M fully associative, and N is middle, like two or four or eight, I'm that I'm N way set associative. So when I'm, when N is one and I'm direct mapped, is it's clear what we do. If I have to replace a block, it's the block that used to be there because everybody, every color, blue, 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 maps to the blue guy, and if this is the one that's supposed to be there, and there's somebody else who does tag doesn't match, get that guy out. Easy. Both N way set associative and fully associative are N way within its set, and fully, fully for the whole cache, fully associative within either the set or the whole cache, respectively. So it means that what happens? Well, if I have a choice, where do we write the incoming block? If we're fully associative. Well, first of all, let's let's find a, a blank spot. Now, I mean, blank is weird because there's bits everywhere, but let's first check the valid bits, see if there's any rows, any blocks that are invalid, blocks that are garbage, and they're cold in some sense, if that block is empty, put it in that spot. Don't do any work. Don't have to kick anybody out. But what happens when they're all full? What happens when they're all valid, but none of the tags match? And we gotta bring somebody else in. Well, folks, ain't no free lunch. Somebody's gotta go. This one has to go in, somebody has to go out. We can't do anything else. So how do we decide? And that's called the block replacement policy. The replacement policy, when we replace a block because we're in a fully associative window, either within a set or within the whole cache, if it's fully associative in the whole cache, how do we kick out some guy if they're all full, but none of them are the same tag as the one I wanna bring in? So the most common thing we do is the least recently used. Most recently means I just touched it, fresh is hottest right there. Least recently, that's the one with cobwebs. Least recently means the one that hasn't been used at all. So who got in? Who back? Who got in back? Who got in back in the early days of of yesteryear and hasn't been touched since? And somehow we have to remember. Hey, let's talk about this. So why would we do? Let's just talk about why we even do this. Why would we do LRU? Because temporal locality. You know, temporal locality says if I access a particular memory location, chances are pretty high that all things being equal, I'm going to access that same thing again. I'm probably going through an array, or maybe I'm doing a sum, and that maybe I'm a adding to one element of the array is the sum, and I keep taking all the elements and putting in this element. The first element is going to be the sum as I add up all these guys. Keep stuffing in this guy. Well, that guy gets hit a lot. So that's what LRU is about. LRU says, if you visited before, I need to kick out the oldest one that I'm probably not using and keep the ones that I am using. Again, exploiting temporal locality. The downside is I now have to keep track of the relative order of things. I've got four sets. Let's say four were set associated. I'm only talking about them one set now. And let's say I touch them, this guy first, then this guy, then this guy, then this guy, load them all in. Everything's happy. I'm cash is very warm. I'm going, I'm just reading these guys. And all of a sudden I read a fifth guy. Well, and who's the oldest one? Well, I read one, two, three, four. This is the most recent. Well, I touched them one. That was the oldest one. Then I touched that one. Then this one. Then this one. That's the that's the newest one. That's the oldest. I'll kick this guy out. So now this is the newest one. But now this is the newest. But now that's the second. And this is the third. And that's the fourth. Okay. Now I, now I load the thumb in. Who does it? Well, it's the fourth. Then this guy has to go out. And now who's it? Now this is the newest. That's the second. That's the third. That's a, so you can imagine. I've got to keep four factorial kind of combinations of, the permutations really, of who, what the ordering is. And so four things, the ordering that's four factorial, that's 24 things, I now need five bits. Go ahead, have some fun trying to come up with the logic for how to update that. It's almost like you're keeping a, a record, a scratch book, which is easy to do in software. If I had this software cache, really easy. I can just do this all in software, have a set, an ordering and give it a number and up, it, up, up, up the numbers, easy. Harder, much, much harder to do in hardware. So that's not easy to do. Even four-way, as I said, is very hard to do. Imagine eight-way, crazy, right? Eight factorial. But two-way is really easy. LRU says, if I grab, if here's, two, here's two rows, I grab this one, well, that's the one I haven't grabbed recently. So give this a bit called the LRU bit points there. Points to zero or one. 
This means this is the least recent. If I just touch this one, that's the least recently used. Very easy. So you can use a single bit for a two-way. Love that. So actually, we're going to see an example in about two minutes to think about this. FIFO. What does FIFO mean? You hear FIFO, your computer scientist, you think a queue, right? First in, first in, first out, like waiting in the line for, for checkout of a, of a grocery store. And that says, I'm going to ignore the accesses. Okay, you got loaded into the cache, and you're chugging through, and you're waiting, and maybe other things are being filled up around you. That's fine. You're enjoying your time. Maybe people are accessing you. But being accessed doesn't bump you to the front of the line. This whole example I was doing here is whenever you get touched, you get bumped to the front of the line. You get reordered like that. In a FIFO model, you just say, no, when you got loaded in, that's the order. And then you're the first one out. It just feels fair in a way, but it kind of ignores the temporal locality. It ignores the fact that I keep hitting this guy, even though it was there. Well, no, eventually this, even though I'm hitting it every time, sorry, you get out. But, but, but I'm hitting it every time or every other time. Nope. This one and then somebody new one. And this one and somebody new. And this one somebody Well, keep this guy in. This guy is obviously interesting. Nope. Sorry. You're, you're, whatever, you're in line. Next in line for being kicked out. Oh, that's a bummer. I was really being used a lot. Right? That's not so happy. Or random. Random says, you know what? Uh, let's just kick out a random person. And maybe we luck out. And it turns out that you could run a trace. We talked about how to run traces on this thing and set up a cache that has a random policy. And it actually may do better than all of these. That's what's fun about these. Whenever, you, whenever we're still talking about you know, parameters or settings of caches, if we're still talking about it, then there might be still some application where that makes more sense to do it that way. Um, you know, I mean, think about random. You have to code the ordering, even in software hardware. You have to code the ordering. You don't have to worry about the queue. You just pick somebody else random, kick them out. And so maybe you have not, not too bad performance with random. So these are still three active at random, certainly less used than an LRU, the, and which LRU is the most common. <laughs> it's kind of least, but it's most common. Um, but random is still out there. And so random is still a, person, a design choice as you're making your own caches. So let's actually look at an example. This will ground it once we actually work on this. So we have a same two-way set associative cache, four byte total, so four bytes, very small. One byte blocks, just we're talking about bytes now, we're back to the days of load bytes. But here's the idea, it's two-way. So that means two of those guys, so let's look here, this, here's the picture. So that means two of them, and by the way, all the reds are the even numbers. If you remember a slide or two ago, it, it, it showed, it was like red, green, red, green, red, green, and it mapped to two reds up top and two greens. So it basically says all the even guys are gonna be in red, and all the odd guys are gonna be in green. And what's gonna happen, we're gonna redraw this, so these are both the red. All the even guys, all the even memory, al al memory accesses are gonna go in the top set, and all the odd memory accesses are gonna go there. That's the idea, and we'll see what happens. So yeah, we're gonna do very simple, zero, two, zero, one, four, zero. And by the way, here's the fun thing. If I, well, this is a great exam question. I give you a cache and I say, give me the access pattern to make it look really good. Well, just hit the same one all the time, right? Zero, 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 zero. I load it in and now I've got it. But maybe you're, do something else and random kicks it out. So think about, if I tell you to construct the access pattern, think about what that access pattern might be to make it look really good or really bad. So you can do that. That's a great question I might ask on an exam. So here's my cache. Remember, the top row is for even memory accesses and the bottom is for odd. So I ask for zero. This cache is cold, stone cold. So I got to bring that in and I don't care. I'll just bring it into uh, location zero. And what I really, this zero is really saying it's the data at location zero. I'm not bringing literally the zero in. This representation, this picture says bring the memory it's really mem of zero is being put in. Whatever was in mem of zero, that goes there. That's what, just make sure you understand. I'm not bringing the number zero in. It's mem of zero, but I'm showing it a zero just to make it easy here. I've got to set the LRU bit, which is the one that's least recently used. It's the other guy. Because it's most, this location zero is more recently used than location one. So even though there's nothing there and the valid bit is turned off there, I'm going to set LRU there just to remind you that there's, that's the LRU side. Now I copy that down so that I'm kind of showing you the, the, the time views of that. And now I ask for two. Two is also an even number, and two's not loaded in. Um, I can check the tags to verify two's not there. So I bring two, I first check of all the, in parallel, I'm checking the two locations, in parallel of two. Um, I know it's a miss because location one has its valid bit off, and location zero has a different tag. The tag is for the zero, not for two. So I am going to, blink. I'm gonna bring it in, and now I'm gonna set location 
This is, by the way, a great example. If I were copying back and forth from zero to two, they could both live there. Both of those memory locations could live there, and I could copy back and forth from zero to two. This is, again, one of the benefits of even a two-way set associative guy. So because I touched two last, I'm gonna make over and say, you know, if you kick, have to kick somebody out and set zero, kick out the zero, because two is the freshest one, and zero is the most stale. Kind of smelling a little bit, too. Let's ask for zero again. Oh, see, well, let's flip it again. It's a hit, yay! Zero and two are both there. That's a hit. We're gonna move the LRU bit over, and now two is the oldest one, because I most recently used, touched this. Here we go, one. Well, I have yet to have an odd number, so I haven't even touched set one yet. So let's bring that into a set. That's, that Really, that whole set was cold. So let's bring it into location zero and set our LRU bit over. All this is kind of hopefully making sense as we're working with this. Now I've got, just copy that down again, and now the last one, I've got a four, or a second to last one, I've got a four. Now here's an issue. This is exactly why I was keeping track of my LRU bit. I look at both of those locations. Any valid bits off? Any blank spots, really? Nope, they're both valid. All right, well, I wish I had, boy, I wish I had a way to kick, to figure out what a block replacement policy is. I have one, I got four is not in there, so the tags don't match, and they're both valid, which means that's exactly the case of kicking somebody old out and bringing my new four in there, or mem of four in there. Who do I put it, where do I put it? I put it in the LRU spot. That single bit told me that's the guy you're gonna do. That's the one who's the dustiest, oldest, most stank, uh, piece of memory, most stank uh, data from whatever piece of memory you have. So bring in mem of four there and set the LRU bit over, whoops, to the zero. Keep going. Now I'm gonna ask for a zero. Yay, the zero didn't get kicked out. I mean, it, there was a little bit of an LRU bit question over there, but zero still there. Again, zero is another hit. So that's awesome. If you remember, let's go back to the day of this is the first, first lecture I ever gave you, the first, like, second lecture, where I had a very simple blue, red, I forget the colors, but there was only, it was a four byte cache, one it, w direct map, four byte direct map cache, and it was blue. So zero would have gone to the zero spot. Two goes here. Zero is a hit. One's a miss, okay? Four would have been a miss. It was. And because, and now I ask for zero again, zero and four are both blue. They would have pointed to the same spot. This was better. All it would have been the same. It would have been exactly the same. Zero miss, two miss, zero hit. All that would have been the same so far. One miss, four miss. It would have been, in the olden days, it would have said zero miss, because four and zero would have lived in the same blue row. But because zero and four can both be here together, this is a hit. So that's, that particular example was the same all up until that last zero in which I'd had direct map, zero would have been a miss. Here it's a hit because zero and four, both blue, in the first picture that I showed you, can both coexist happily. And I could very happily copy between zero and four in this guy I couldn't have in a direct map cache. That's kind of the example we got there. Bloop, and now I set the LRU bit. Now, what's really wonderful is there's a simulator, woo! I didn't write it. Um, someone at UMass wrote this, Cor Corin, I believe, at UMass wrote this amazing, Professor Corin, I'm sure, I should give credit, uh, I don't actually know who, who wrote this, but I know the years already is Corin, wrote this wonderful simulator, and you can set the parameters of your cache, and I just adjusted the parameters to be exactly this problem! And then you can go in and set up the sequence, the, 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 the request. Show me the list of requests, memory requests. So I put in 020140. And what this does is, look what it does. It color codes them as compulsory miss, which means, we talked about that before, you gotta take the loss anyway. It was, you know, it's cold, you gotta take that miss anyway. Capacity miss, that means if you only had more space, you wouldn't have had that issue. And conflict misses say, well, that would be a nice hit, but two guys are at the same spot. Watch this, blue. Zero, the first zero, that was a compulsory miss. Then the next one, two was a compulsory miss. Zero was a hit in this guy, you saw that, that zero was a hit. One was a compulsory miss. Four, again, four was a conflict miss, okay, in this particular case. And I kicked out the two. There wasn't room to hold zero, two, and four in this cache, that's a conflict miss. So. Kick out two, and this even shows, look, kicked out the two. And then 
bring back the zero, and zero is a hit again. So it even color codes in these categories what this is. It'll tell you, I've got six queries. Four of them were misses. So it tells you the miss ratio, the hit, hit miss rate, sorry, the hit rate, really nice simulator. So you can practice and make sure that you understand this. And you can say, you know, here's a particular cache parameter. Can you ever get to 80% misses? Can, I, can you play with that? Can you predict what you'll get? How about this? I could imagine I give you this setup, I give you this sequence, and I say, fill in this table. You should be able to run the traces in your head, or like on paper, like I just did, and get those values. So, I love this cache simulator. Please feel free to help you learn what caches are and how they work. We'll see you at the next lecture.